Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> Chief, what's this I hear about the children's zoo returning your gift? Yeah, how about that? A baby hippopotamus worth thousands of dollars, and they sent it back. Well, I, I don't understand. Neither do I. You try to do something nice for the kids, give them some pleasure, a little advice. Advice? Well, I didn't give them just a plain hippo. I gave them a hippo with a message. <laughs> Chief, how could you? Now, what's wrong with that? Kids don't read enough these days. Well, let's turn a baby hippopotamus into, into a signboard. Oh, it's only water paint it washes right off. That way, I can change the message every few days. Uncle Milby? <laughs> well, Milburn Drysdale is kind of cold and formal. Uncle Milby's more the real me. Warm, generous, fun love. <laughs> save your pennies in a pig or save them in a cup, but... Bring them to the Commerce Bank or I will eat you up! Kids love rhyme. Oh, but, gee, that's terrible. Well, maybe I can think of something better. No, no, I mean, the whole idea is thoroughly reprehensible. What are you talking about? I'm entitled to get something for my money. What money? You got this animal by foreclosing on a stranded circus. Well, what's the difference? A kid would have loved him. One week, we could have painted nursery rhymes on him, like... Pussycat, pussycat, where have you went? to the Commerce Bank for 5%. <laughs> Your telephone's ringing. Oh, keep thinking of some others. Maybe the zoo director will change his mind. Don't you worry, little hippo. I'll wash this right off. Now, Jethro, I don't want any more arguments. I want a chicken pen, and I want it right up again Miss Drysdale's head. Well, Miss Drysdale ain't gonna like it. What she don't like, she can lump. If I put the pen up again the hedge, some of the chickens will slip through and go to scratching up Miss Drysdale's flowers. You think so? Is you trying to provoke a scrap with Miss Drysdale? Why, Jethro, she's my next door neighbor. My dear friend. I love a lady. Well. I just hope you mean what... Hey, Granny? Hey, there's a real funny-looking critter next door. Oh, out in the yard, is she? <laughs> I can't see too good, but it's big and fat and ugly and got a mouth like a gator. That's my dear friend, all right. Here, Granny, you look. Was that your granny yelping or one of your critters? Well, smell like grin. Dad, Eddie May, Dad, who is it complains when I tries to raise chickens in the back? Miss Drysdale. And who is it squawks when I tries to raise a cow? Miss Drysdale. And who is it screams to a high heaven when I try to run a goat or a sheep? Granny, uh, what are you getting at? I'm getting at this. That spiteful woman has turned her backyard into a hog lot. A hog lot? Granny, Miss Drysdale wouldn't touch a hog with a ten-foot pole. She's got one now that she better not try to touch without a ten-foot pole. What you mean? We raised us some big porkers back home in the hills. But this hog makes a razorback look like a ground squirrel. Come on, kid. When you yell Suey at that rascal, you better not stand twixt him in a trough. You know something? I don't think that's a big hog at all. Shh! Don't mean my 
house him, Ellie. Hmm. Hate to get that hog riled. <laughs> I mean, he's something else. Yeah. I wonder where Miss Drysdale got to hold him. Ellie, run around the back door and ask her. Granny, I think this could have come from Africa. That must be someplace in Virginia. Virginia? Yeah, they raise awful big hogs there. Feed them on peanuts. Well, there's a goober grabber if I ever seen one. <laughs> Real whopper. Well, I still say this ain't no big hog. What are you talking about, child? Why, that rascal is good for 300 yards of chitlins alone. <laughs> and would you look at them jowls? Take a tub of turnip greens just to season them. <laughs> you gonna butcher them, Uncle Jed? Well, he ain't ours to butcher, Jethro. Oh, how I wish he was. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, that critter ain't no butchering hog. And I'm telling you, you're deaf. That animal is standing on a pair of 200-pound hams. And that bacon would fill a smokehouse. <laughs> Look at the size of them big knuckles. But listen, yeah. Ellie. You run and ask Miss Drysdale where she got them. I, I told you. And while you're at it, uh, ask her, could we buy them off her? But, Pa, yeah. they may do as your toll time is a-wasting. But, Jed, if you buy that rascal, we's gonna be eating high on the hog, sure enough. High, low, and in between. First thing I'm going to do is send one of them hams to Lee Summit, Missouri. That really Mar thinks she can cure a big ham. Granny, can't you just send her a picture? Why, well, you'd be giving away a thousand ham sandwiches. No, Chancho. Missouri is the show-me state. They got to see it to believe it. They could see this and still not believe it. Granny, the maid says Miss Drysdale's back in Boston. Do tell. Uh, what about the mischief? Well, he's down to the bank. Ain't nobody home but the maid, and she don't know nothing about this critter. Well, well, nobody's home, huh? <laughs> Jethro, instead of a chicken pen, you make me a hog pen. <laughs> Ellie Mae, you Hog pen? Granny, you ain't fixing to bring this critter home. Well, somebody's got to look after him, Jed. He's wasting away to skin and bones. <laughs> <laughs> you leave him right there till I talk to Mr. Drysdale. Well, suppose he don't want to sell them. Well, then that's our tough luck. Come on, everybody. Giddy up, giddy up. Come on. Granny, I said leave that hog here. Jed, I'm doing everything I can to keep him here. I'm even sitting on him. <laughs> I just spoke with the director of the Children's Zoo. He absolutely will not permit bank commercials on his animals. Then I say no more zoo commercials on our money. Zoo commercials? Yes, did you ever hear of the buffalo nickel? <laughs> what about the eagle on the quarter? <laughs> Chief, you are sick. You bet I am. Here's a great chance to educate our little tots. Will you tell them my nursery rhyme right, idea? Yes, and he doesn't consider a pussycat, pussycat, where have you went as educational. <laughs> well, what about the second line? to the Commerce Bank for 5%. That's the educational part. <laughs> Give up. I will not. I've, I've, got, I've got some brilliant stuff here. Listen to this. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her. Got a loan from Uncle Milby. Now they always happy will be. <laughs> here's another one. Tom, Tom, the pauper son. That's the piper's son. This kid is a pauper son. <laughs> so this old man borrows money from the Commerce Bank and strikes it rich. <laughs> oh, no, here, wait. Here's, here's a good one right here. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, figuring her interest rate. <laughs> Along came a spider and sat down beside her and said, Hey, this commerce bank is great. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That may be the zoo director with a change of heart. <laughs> Melvin Drysdale speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Clampett. What can I do for you? My granny has just got a powerful hankering for that big fat hog ears. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but she's in Boston for a week. <laughs> Don't tell him I'm hankering for it. That ain't no way to make a deal. I see somebody stuck there with a sick hog. Sick hog? Oh, he's in bad shape, Mr. Drysdale. His bristles have all fell out, and his tail has come on kink. Oh, I grant you he looks big and fat. But that's because he's a windsucker. All blow. Take my word for it, Mr. Drysdale. That hog is dying of the epizootic. <laughs> oh, Granny, you must mean the hippopotamus. I mean the epizootic. <laughs> Tell you what I'll do. I'll buy him from you. Just 
for the hide and the tallow. That's a dry deal. I hope you'll forgive Granny for trying to shuck you out of your hog. We'll call you back. Bye. <laughs> Granny, I am plumb ashamed of you. What do you mean? It's always open season on drummers and city slickers. Not when they're your next door neighbors. You have done hurt Mr. Drysdale to the quick. I'll bet you he's fit to bust down and cry. Come <laughs> well, he's dying to buy that hippo. She thinks it's a big hog. Uh, Chief, whether it's a hog or a hippo, she won't be allowed to keep it. Oh, I know that. Eventually, she'll have to give it to the zoo, the children's zoo. And there'll be a little inspirational message on him for the kitty. <laughs> Where, where are you going? Sick leave. You're not sick. If I don't leave, I will be. Come on in here, don't go on here. What you doing, Granny? Oh, hi, Jed. Hi, what you doing? Trying to get my rope out of the Drysdale's yard. It must have snagged on something like a root or a, or a stump. Or a hog. A hog? Why, yeah. I'll bet you that's what happened. That poor starving critter probably swallowed the other end of my rope, thinking it was a, a big stalk of sugar cane. You think so? Yeah. We gotta save him, Jed. Why don't you call Mr. Drysdale, see if you can make a deal with him for that poor, sick, miserable beast. Any the other end of this rope is tied around that hog's neck. Oh, it's worse than I thought. He's trying to hang himself. Hang himself? Yeah. Amongst hogs, that's known as suicide. <laughs> what you been whitewashing? The, the chicken house. We ain't got no chicken house. Well, I guess I wasted my time. <laughs> now, please, Jen, don't call me to dry the dado. I'm going to untie that hog. No, Jed, don't go. I'll do it. Please, Jed, don't go. Wait, wait, Jed. Don't touch that hog. You'll get the epizootic, sure as you can. That hog ain't got the epizootic, and you know it. Well, he's got something that's about to kill him. Yeah, you. <laughs> Whatever give you that crazy notion? Well, uh, let's say it's the way you got him whitewashed. <laughs> this hog down, and then you're going to let him be. But Jed, I can't leave him here alone and unprotected. The wolves might get him. Wolves? You know how they like little pigs. <laughs> I've never seen you so bound and determined to get your hands on a critter. What is it? Jed, all my life I've wanted to win first prize for the biggest ham at the fair. <laughs> and Willie Marr always beat me out. I'm an old woman, Jed. This is my last chance. If I could just go to my grave with a blue ribbon, I'd be the happiest woman alive. <laughs> Granny, I can understand you wanting this hog, but buy him off Mr. Drysdale, fair and square. All right, Jed, I will. After all, it's only money. You can't take it with you. That's the spirit. Now, uh, what do you figure is a fair offer? Well, he's our next door neighbor. And our very dear friend. How about a dollar and a quarter? <laughs> All right, kid. I'll go a dollar thirty. But for that price, he's got to pull it through the hedge for me. A dollar thirty? <laughs> Granny, that hog will weigh out at close to a thousand pounds. That's all hoof and hide. Why, dressed, I bet you he wouldn't go twenty pounds. I'll be lucky to break even. Hey, Granny, give me my commission. I went around the neighborhood like you told me to and took orders on two hundred dollars worth of hog meat. Hush, folks is on the phone. Pretty good price for twenty pounds, isn't it? Well, you wouldn't begrudge a poor old widow a little profit, would you? Mr. Drydale, is here a Judd Clampett? Say, uh, would you consider $200 for that hog? $200! That's a deal, then. Keep winter wrapping! Thank you, Mr. Drydale. Bye. <laughs> Granny, you can't take it with you. Who's going anywhere? I'll have to put a lot of sawdust in my sauces to come out on that deal. Granny, 
I told everybody... You to... shut your big $200 mouth. Well, but, Granny, I told everybody you were going to come up with top-grade hickory smoked meat. And you're right. I'm going to cut me a piece of hickory, and I'm going to smoke your meat. <laughs> from here. Let's go. Hey, Ellie, where are you going with Granny's hog? I'm taking him to the zoo, because he ain't no hog. Well, he better be a hog. I done sold $200 worth of that rascal, and I ain't even up to his ferry. <laughs> well, this critter's what you call a hippopotamus. Can you get $200 worth of bacon, pork chops, or country sausage from a hippopotamus? Yeah. Then this is a hog. <laughs> It's a hippopotamus. Don't say that, Ellie. You're going to cost me a fortune. Look, I'll show you what my commission comes to and what I've sold up till now. Look at here. $200 worth of orders. Now, that's uh, two not not dot not not. Now, I get 5%. That's uh, dot not five, and I put that under the not not and times it. Let's see. Uh, five knots is not. 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 Five twos is one. And a knot. Now, I just add that all up. And put down the knot. Well, I made me a thousand dollars commission. Oh, two hundred dollars worth of orders? It looks like in the meat business, the money's in the cellar. <laughs> Hog, I'm gonna get rich just selling your sausage. There ain't gonna be no sausages, cause this here is a hippopotamus. It might be a hippopotamus now, but it's coming out of that sausage grinder a hog. Yes, it is. I need down to Ellie Mae, that hog ain't to be played with. Now, you take him around back to the trough. But, Granny, this here's what you call a hippopotamus. That's a river horse. He ain't no horse. Now, do as I told <laughs> I mean, he likes water. Good. Give him all he wants and a lot of dry corn. We'll fatten that rascal up to where he can't move. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jethro. Drive me down to Mr. Drysdale's bank. I got a bargain him out of that $200 price. But Uncle Jed said it was a deal. I say it ain't. That city banker and me is gonna do some hog haggling. Now get in. What do you mean, Granny? Ellie will take our hog to the zoo. Ellie's gonna take him back to the cross like I told her. But Granny, listen. Now you listen, child. That hog's hind leg is gonna send me to my grave a famous woman. <laughs> For years they'll be talking about the Daisy Moses Memorial Ham. <laughs> Don't you worry, Harold. Ain't nobody gonna run you through no sausage grinder. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. I know one place where Granny can't get at you. Come on. Chief, the owner of the circus just called. Oh, good. Did he get the bank commercial tattooed on my fat lady? Uh, of course not. <laughs> he wants to know if you'll take a baby elephant off his hands. No, I won't. The children's zoo would love to have it. They would, eh? Well... Maybe we can work something out. Now, let's see. A nickel drop into my trunkle, draw 5% from sweet old uncle. No, Chief, no. I have told you the children's zoo will not permit you to paint bank commercials on their animals. Then they don't get the elephant. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> Chief, Chief, listen, please. It seems that the baby hippo and the baby elephant were inseparable companions. Now the baby elephant is pining away for his friend. They should be together. But how can they be? I just sold the hippo to the clampets. <laughs> they think it's a big hog. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Maybe I can tell them the elephant is a long-nosed calf. Gee! <laughs> can we come in? Granny, Jethro, how are you? How's that big hog? He's too darn high. That's how he is. You hornswoggled Jed out of $200 when you sold him that puny hog. Puny? But you speak when you spoke to him. Now, you and me is going to do some hog hacking. There's no need to, Granny. You can have him free. Oh, no. I came here to haggle, and we's going to haggle. Now, you set a price, then I'll make an offer. Then we'll lock horns and go at it. Excuse Granny, if he's willing... If you he's... listen and learn, boy. I'll show you how it's done. All right, let her fly. I'll sell you the hog for $50. I'll give you 10 40 20 30 40 40 50 and that's my last offer. <laughs> well, all right. So... Adam, 
He don't know what hit him. <laughs> but, Granny, he was going to sell you the hog for $30. Didn't learn a thing, did you? <laughs> I'll see if I got $50 in my reticule. You might have to carry me for part of it. Oh, no problem. Oh, Granny, as long as we're dealing, how would you like to buy a long-nosed calf? Oh, no. No, Chief. You are not going to sell her that. But if she wants it? No, I absolutely will not let you. Jethro, you are now watching the oldest trick in the Haglin business. You see, she, pretending that she wants the calf, is supposed to make me want it all the more. <laughs> That's what they call chumming the sucker. <laughs> Here's your money for the hog. We'll talk about the calf some other time, when your partner ain't around. <laughs> well, I'll be right with you, Granny. Uh, Mr. Drysdale, I'm going to open up a big account with you. I'm making money hand over fist. Wonderful. How are you doing it, Jethro? Well, selling meat on commission. I made $1,000 already today. What kind of meat are you selling? Oh, hickory smoked ham, bacon, chops, ribs, you name it, I got it. Well, then, put me down for $50 with a bacon and ribs. I'll take $20 for it. Hot dog. 50 and 20, not, not, fetch down the not, five and two, fetch down the seven, times dot, not, five. I've done made another $350. <laughs> Jethro, when do we get the meat? Oh, quick as Granny butchers that big hog you done sold her. <laughs> what did he say? He said, quote, quick as Granny butchers that big hog you done sold her, unquote. I thought that's what he said. I'd better get Mr. Clavin on the phone and tell him to stop Granny. I'll say you'd better. And if anything happens to that hippo, Uncle Milby will be Uncle Mud. Children will pick at this bank. Moppets will mob you in the streets. Their parents will withdraw their money. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no answer. You don't suppose those hillbillies already have... If they have, you had better leave town. My hog is gone! My hog is gone! Hog lepers, call the police! Rich McGon, get out of party! Jethro, where's my hog? Ain't he at the trough? No, he's gone! Aw, oh, done been wiped out! I wanted to die famous. I bet you Ellie Dunn took the hog to the zoo. I don't hardly think she'd do that in her swimming suit. Swimming suit. Yeah, she come downstairs wearing it a while back, said she was headed for the cement farm. Crack the water, don't you, Hiram? Granny's scared of it. It's a weak siphon, near. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ellie Mae's drowning my hog. We just will jump in and pull him out. Give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth recitation. <laughs> I ain't getting close to them jowls till he's on a plate. Come on, Tell Granny. He likes the water. He'll shrink. His hide will pucker. Get him out of there. <laughs> when I'm coming out to you, promise not to butcher Hiram. She done turned him into a pet. Forget him, Jethro. By the time he gets out of the water, he'll be ruined. There ain't no market for soggy sausage. <laughs> Granny, how's the hog? Is he all right? Oh, he's fine. He's fine. We just giving him a bath. I tell you what, I'll trade you my big clean hog, even up for your dirty little long nosed cat. It's a deal. Chief, both of those animals are going to the children's zoo. You promised. Oh well, all right. Back to Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, I don't want to shame you in front of nobody. But that ain't no long-nosed calf. Thank you, Granny. But that zoo sure is getting a prize-winning hog. Chief, I just spoke to the director of the children's zoo, and the truck is on its way. Fine, fine. The children are going to be charmed and delighted by these animals. They're going to like these poems, too, Mr. Drysdale. Poems? Yeah, he's wrote a dandy on this critter. You can give my trunk a yank if you bring your folks to the Commerce Bank. <laughs> Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. 
You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.